today on ELN Morning. Price hikes. The town of Elon's waste bills are expected to rise. The cause coming up. On the mound, the Phoenix are ready to step up to the plate and make their return this spring season. Walking for a cause. The annual Relay for Life fundraiser is back in person with eyes set on a big goal. Today, February 17th, 2022. This is ELN Morning. CDC Director Rochelle Walensky says the agency is reviewing its mask guidance and may soon issue an update. This is half of state mask mandates uh, dropped in the last three weeks and some universities begin assessing maskless environments for those boosted and vaccinated. We begin our coverage here. Happy Thursday morning everyone. I'm Ashlyn Delowey. And I'm Baylor Rodman. You're watching ELN Morning. Walensky says the CDC will now focus more on COVID hospitalizations rather than cases as the guide to whether public health measures should be lifted. Hospitalizations nationwide have fallen 28% and 25% here in North Carolina over the past week. That is just slightly lower than hospitalizations during the peak of Delta. Walensky says she wants to give people a break from wearing masks as the pandemic improves. We all share the same goal to get to a point where COVID-19 is no longer disrupting our daily lives, a time when it won't be a constant crisis, rather something we can prevent, protect against, and treat. If and when we update our guidance, we will communicate that clearly, and it will be based on the data and the science. So the question now, what does this mean for Elon? Healthy Elon Chair Jeff Stein says the committee has been discussing next steps on shifting away from current restrictions for quite some time. He says Elon wants to remove restrictions, quote, as soon as we can. We'll be communicating with the campus on this topic soon. While things are getting much better and we are close, we're not there today. Stein says one of the reasons why is because, quote, your faculty and staff still have kids at home that cannot be vaccinated. That said, we should note faculty and staff have never been required by Elon to be vaccinated or boosted themselves, unlike the student body. Residents throughout the town of Elon may soon see their trash and recycling bills nearly double. Our Margaret Faust has the story. People are generating more waste, requiring more workers who need to be paid more. And garbage trucks are breaking down and need repairs, leaving price hikes for residents. Resident Michael Geary, who also works in waste management, says he's seen prices go up like this before and expects it to get worse. We have a blessing and a curse. We're growing, which means that our economy is growing. The unfortunate part is we haven't planned to really um, become a zero sum when it comes to trash. Elon Mayor Emily Sharp says with fewer trash and recycling companies to choose from, prices are harder to negotiate. That's your cost and here it is. So, you know, until there's an uh, improved market for recyclables and there are more, um, there's more competition, we're going to continue to see increases in these services. Sharp says one way to lower costs is to generate less waste in the first place. Nothing is going to change overnight, but there's definitely things that we as consumers can do to help control this. Town officials say final details are expected by the end of March. Margaret Faust, ELN Morning. Sharp says residents who are unhappy with these changes or have other solutions should attend the next Board of Aldermen meeting on March 7th at 6 p.m. On Sunday, just over half of the 200 potential new members are expected to join a fraternity. Vice President of Recruitment Chase Gurry says he wants the chapters to accept more new members, but doesn't think that'll happen just yet. We can't force upon the chapters to accept quotas of students, or PNM, sorry. So it's at the end of the day, it's the chapter's decision, and we can only do so much. We can obviously help the PNMs as much as possible and help the chapters. Um, through this week and help them plan their events. But at the end of the day, it is a chapter's decision. Gurry says those who don't receive a bid will be notified Saturday to avoid disappointment. He hopes that no matter what, those who rushed learn something. At the end of the day, even if they do not accept a bid or receive a bid, I hope that they learned to put themselves out of their comfort zone and be confident in who they are and stay true to themselves, even when they're trying to join an organization. 
um, to never waver in who you are. If someone who rushed didn't receive a bid this spring, Gurry says they can rush again in the fall. Elon Baseball has its opening series at home against the Fairfield University Stags. Head coach Mike Kennedy is optimistic about the season, saying that his main focus heading into the opener is his bullpen. We're trying to be uh, consistent with, with our pitching staff and trying to get pitch counts up to where, um, you know, guys we think that are going to be uh, potential star starters for us can get their pitch count up to a, to a number that gives them a chance to go five, maybe six innings opening day. The first game of the series is set for Friday at 4 p.m. At Hunt Park, the softball team is preparing for the Elon Softball Phoenix Invitational. Three other college programs will join the Phoenix in its annual tournament between Friday and Sunday. Head coach Kathy Bocock says the team is looking forward to playing this tournament at home. Our girls love playing at home, and the more we can play at home, the better it helps us moving forward. But, you know, we do have some good teams coming in here, and I think we're going to have some good weather. So we're just looking forward to some good softball. The Phoenix first game of five is set for Friday at 1.30 against Providence College. This Saturday, along with playing its last home game, the men's basketball team will honor three seniors, Chuck Hanna, Chris Wooten, and Chris Mendes. Head coach Mike Schrage says that the team's mind might be elsewhere, but it's important to remember to honor those three. You know, at this time of the year, you're about, it's all about trying to play your best leading into that conference tournament, but we, we, we need to play for those guys too. Um, you know, all three of those guys have been huge, huge contributors to whatever energy we have been building here. Tip-off against Drexel University is set for Saturday at 4 p.m. Relay for Life was one of the few events held before campus closed in March of 2020. After a year of virtual and in-person events, the organization is already exceeding their fundraising mark of over $70,000. Next weekend, students will be leading the fight against cancer in Daniel Lee Gym. Elon Senior and Executive Director of Elon's event, Dana Miller, says almost 100 more students registered this week, crediting their recent fundraising efforts for this achievement. She says it's exciting to be back in person for this year's event. I was kind of like, wow, we're like actually doing this again. Like, you know, of course, everyone was wearing masks and being safe, but, you know, kind of getting back to those like pre COVID um, feelings. So it definitely just felt like really exciting. Serving on committees and leading Relay for Life is something Miller has done all four years of her Elon experience. She says she has a personal connection to the event that started when she was younger. I actually relay for my papa and my aunt. So it's really something that's near and dear to my heart, and I just wanted to um, be able to, you know, do the same thing here again. Students looking to register for the event next weekend or donate to the American Cancer Society can do so at relayforlife.org slash Elon. Right, nine minutes after the hour now, and our Jenna Mandrioli joins us live on Citroen Plaza for a look at the weather ahead. Good morning, Jenna. Good morning, Baylor and Ashlyn. I have to say, I'm so excited for the weather up ahead. We're definitely going to see some warmer trends, and walking to class is going to be much more enjoyable. It's a little cloudy out right now, but later we'll see more sun and highs in 70s. Now for your Phoenix 5-day forecast. Tomorrow will be a little cloudy, but the warm weather will still remain with temperatures in the low 60s. Heading into the weekend, the sun is here to stay, but with temperatures in the high 50s. Monday will keep up this weather pattern with highs in the 60s and some clouds, but be a little bit wary on Tuesday because this warmer weather will be accompanied with some rain. Get outside while you can. Have a great week, Elon. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jenna Mendrioli on Citroen Plaza for us this morning. Jenna, thank you. All right, Elon Acapella Group Vital Signs is set to bring their ninth annual fundraising concert Saturday in Whitley Auditorium to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation. All right, Macy Bischoff, you join us now here in the studio. You're the president, correct? Yes, yes I am. Well, Madam President, thank you so much for joining us <laughs> uh, here you. in the thank studio. You for having us. We're so, so excited. it's the ninth benefit concert. Yes, You've been it doing is. this, I know, so even before your time here at Elon. Yes. Tell us, you know, just what this means to you and the group. Yeah, so Make-A-Wish kind of got started by one of our Elon alum. I mean, he had a sister named Bella who was a big part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the Make-A-Wish Foundation actually helped her a lot with her experience. Um, so he started 
that concert nine mm -hmm. years ago, and now we're still continuing it. It's been a huge success, and we raise a lot of money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation every year. Yeah, how much did you raise last year? Do you know? Uh, to, last year we got to over about twelve thousand dollars. I think it was. Wow, yeah. fantastic! Yeah. And so what's the goal for this year? We set a goal every year. Um, recently, the last few years, we've been setting a goal of ten thousand dollars. Okay. And currently, we're sitting at about around eight thousand, which is phenomenal before the concert because of. Um, we're still selling tel tickets, still doing mm -hmm. raffles. There's going to be donations during the concert itself. So it's going to be a, a really, really great contribution we get to make to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I imagine you guys are all excited, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been like all we think about for the past like, months. So. I imagine, I imagine. So all seven acapella groups at Elon are yes. joining in. And you have a few from a few other schools, right? Yes, we have um, two visiting groups from NC State, uh, Ladies in Red and Grains of Time that will be coming. And they've performed in the past for us, and they're awesome. They're so great to have. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, before you guys sing us out, that is all the news we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us. For all the news you need to know when we're not on the air, of course, visit us, visit us on our website, <laughs> elonnewsnetwork.com. And be sure to follow us at Elon News Network. Have a great weekend, Elon. Vital signs. Take it away. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, she slid down the hall in her socks and yelled, come outside. No, 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 nothing's wrong. I just happened to have a surprise. Well, we fell through the door like the orders. And I wrestled my brother down to his knees just to watch as a rocket shot. Sky.